ahead and come before the Lord this morning. Uh, and let's prepare our hearts to receive the King of Kings. May God bless us as we worship. Forgot I was going to do the, the usual routine. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> invite you to stand as you're able as we sing. you to turn to page 351. We will be using a different greeting throughout Advent, which I should have also mentioned. It's the one that begins, bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Let's try that one more time. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Beloved, you may be seated. Beloved in the Lord, our Savior Christ, in the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood as a sign and pledge of his love for the continual remembrance of the sacrifice of his death and for a spiritual sharing in his risen life. For in these holy mysteries we are made one with Christ and Christ with us. We are made one body in him and members one of another. Having in mind, therefore, his great love for us, and obe in obedience to his command, his church renders to Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, never-ending thanks for the creation of the world, for his continual providence over us, for his love for all mankind, and for the redemption of the world by our Savior Christ, who took upon himself our flesh, and humbled himself even to death on the cross, that he might make us the children of God by the power of the Holy Spirit and exalt us to everlasting life. But if we are to share rightly in the celebration of those holy mysteries and be nourished by that spiritual food, we must remember the dignity of that holy sacrament, 
I therefore call upon you to consider how St. Paul exhorts all persons to prepare themselves carefully before coming, before eating of that bread and drinking of that cup. For as the benefit is great, it with, it with penitent hearts and living faith, we receive the Holy Sacrament. So is the danger great if we receive it improperly, not recognizing the Lord's body. Judge yourselves, therefore, lest you be judged by the Lord. Examine your lives and conduct by the rule of God's commandments, that you may perceive wherein you have offended in what you have done or left undone, whether in thought, word, or deed. And acknowledge your sins before Almighty God with full purpose of amendment of life, being ready to make restitution for all injuries and wrongs done by you to others, and also being ready to forgive those who have offended you, in order that you yourselves may be forgiven. And then, being reconciled with one another, come to the banquet of that most heavenly food. And if in your preparation you need help and counsel, then go and open your grief to a discreet and understanding priest, and confess your sins, that you may receive the benefit of absolution and spiritual counsel and advice, to the removal of scruple and doubt, the assurance of pardon, and the strengthening of your faith. To Christ our Lord, who loves us and washed us in his own blood, and made us a kingdom of priests to serve his God and Father, to him be glory in the church evermore. Through him let us offer continually the sacrifice of praise, which is our bounden duty and service. And with faith in him, come boldly before the throne of grace and humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, and keep you in eternal life.
be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal, through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A lesson from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil. To make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard. No ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean. And all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to, to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
lesson from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as you're able. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated.
Would you pray with me? Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be now and always acceptable in thy sight, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, there I was, sitting in the band room with the other members of the pit orchestra during my sophomore year in high school, and I had foolishly volunteered to play trumpet in the pit orchestra for the musical Annie. And wouldn't you know it, nobody seated higher than me in terms of uh, first chair, second chair, etc., volunteered. So yours truly was faced with the task of playing the opening solo to the overture for the musical Annie. Now, it's one of these solos where out of nowhere a trumpet sounds the tune the sun will come out tomorrow. If you've ever seen the musical, you know what I'm talking about. <coughs> and that scared me to death. Why I persisted, I don't know, but I did. And every time during practice, every time that Mr. Playhive, the band director, would bring the baton down and, and give me the cue to, to go ahead and play that solo, and it went on for a little while, I could not get it to work. And it wasn't that it was a difficult piece of music. And before long, especially as we got within just a couple weeks of the opening night, before long, I began to hear snickers as I was struggling with that simple but long solo. And Mr. Flay, I've stopped me. And he looked at me, and he looked at the rest of the pit orchestra, and there were a number of us. And he said, I want you folks to understand something. Todd is going to be playing this solo in front of 1,200 people for four showings of this musical. Now, he didn't need to say that. <laughs> I, can, I can vouch for the fact that I didn't need to hear that. Okay? And he said... No matter what you all might think, you need to remember that if you have no guts, you're going to have no glory. And he looked squarely at me, and he said, get to work. And I knew what he meant. I knew that no guts, no glory meant that it wasn't just gutsy to say, I'm going to play this. He meant that I had to put my guts into figuring out how I was going to play it so that I would not make a complete fool of myself in front of more than 4,000 people. It worked. I went home. I was a good little boy, and I practiced. And it came off, thankfully. Thank you, Lord. For those of us in the church, we understand that concept, or at least we say we do. And I'm speaking as much for myself as for anybody else here. We understand that concept because we understand the concept of no cross, no crown. We understand that when Jesus tells us to take up our cross, and to live daily for him and to die daily for him in order that we might live more fully, we understand what he means. We understand that in some big ways and in some little ways, he's asking us to die to self so that he can live in us more deeply. We understand that that's going to require a gut-wrenching sacrifice at times. At other times, it's going to cause us just a mere annoyance. But we know that if we are going to run the race of faith that St. Paul talks about so, so wonderfully, we know that we are going to have to make sacrifices. We are going to have to keep our eyes focused on the one to whom we are racing, the one who is our finish line. 
the one who has called us and looked us straight in the face and said, go home and practice this. Get ready. So that, not so much that we're not made a fool of, but so that we get the joy of celebrating when the time comes. So it is with Christmas and Advent. These four Sundays of quieting ourselves in the Advent of our Lord Jesus, the coming of our Lord Jesus. Advent means coming. These four Sundays of quieting ourselves are intended to help us make the choice to sacrifice anything and everything that makes our hearts inhospitable for the Holy Child to come and live. It reminds us that as we make our way through these days, we are preparing an inn so that Mary and Joseph can deposit that blessed child within our lives. So that we can allow him to grow there. So that we can be told at his coming what we heard last Sunday. Enter into the joy of your blessing. Faithful child. Oftentimes though, we get hung up on things that we ought not to get hung up on. And for those of you who are on Facebook, you might have noticed that there's a theme that's been developing in my posts, and I'm kind of, I'm, I'm standing against two things this Advent. I'm standing against the materialism that is pushing God's people to celebrate Christmas before Christmas comes. And I'm also standing against those among us, and, and I understand this. It's, it's not that I disagree. But enough of keeping Christ in Christmas. Let's try <coughs> keeping Christ in us. Let's focus on making our hearts and our lives so hospitable for Jesus that when the world looks at us, they're going to want to say, Merry Christmas. Israel got off track. The same way that so much of our culture is off track with all of the all of the materialism and all of the things that don't matter surrounding Christmas. Israel turned her back on God and God, as we read about today, was evidently not listening too well to Israel because Israel says to the <coughs> Lord, you know, you turned your back on us and we sinned. You, you removed your presence from us and we committed transgressions. And I just want to say, <laughs> do we have the order of that correct? Look with me, if you would, at our Old Testament lesson from this morning. We're going to be looking, actually, at uh, from the top of page 7. Isaiah tells us that they are recounting the wonderful deeds of the Lord. And then when they get down to verse 5, they say, you meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. And then they turn. They're implying that they've done nothing wrong. And then they say, but you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There's no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, 
For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of iniquity. There are so many folks out there who are not believers in the Lord Jesus Christ who are wondering why they can't get more of that Christmas feeling. It's because they're not listening. It's because they're not preparing their hearts to receive the Holy Child, much less our Lord Jesus as he returns in glory. We're reading from chapter 64 of Isaiah. In chapter 63, the Lord tells us that he stops listening to Israel because they have turned on him, have ignored what he has called them to do. But they think that they have sinned and transgressed because God isn't listening to them. They're so deaf that they're blaming God for their sin. Isn't it interesting that the more we are told by commercials and other sources to say happy holidays instead of Merry Christmas, isn't it interesting that the more they try to separate the joy of Christ from the joy of the season, the more they have to pump up the advertising, the more they have to get us in the stores earlier and earlier and earlier because we don't have the Christmas feeling. Interesting, isn't it? Now, they turn a corner again. There must be something that they're getting because they say in verses 8 and 9, Yet, O Lord, you are our father, and we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Okay, good. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. They know they've done wrong. They don't want to admit it, but they know they've done wrong. And so the question becomes, Lord, how do you restore to us the joy of our salvation? How can we make ready for what you're wanting to do in our lives? How is it that we can find that blessed communion again? Well, St. Paul has something to say about that. Look with me, if you would, for a moment on page 8 at the epistle lesson. Paul says in verse 4, I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and in knowledge of every kind, and then jumping down to verse 7, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gifts as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then more than that, he will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus. It's kind of like Mr. Flayhive turning to me and reminding me you can play all the other music in the score to this musical, but you're having trouble with this one thing. Put your guts into it. The talent that you need is already there. And Paul is telling the church in no uncertain terms, the Lord Jesus, by the grace of the Holy Spirit, has put in you everything that you need in order to welcome him the way he deserves to be welcomed. The question for us isn't whether it's there. The question is whether it's going to be exercised. What God has given us, we so often allow to languish within us. Muscles that are not used become useless. Faith that is not used, faith that is not exercised, Faith that is not challenged becomes wishy-washy. 
and we begin to wonder why we don't feel the joy of our salvation. Jesus says what Mr. Blayhive said to me, only he says it in his way. Wake up. Keep awake. Stay alert. Think on these things. Focus on these things. You know that when you see the olive tree producing leaves that summer is near. So also when you see other things happening, you know that I'm calling you into action. You know that I'm calling you to prepare the way for me within your heart. Listen to what our Lord says in response to to what Israel said in our Old Testament lesson. I'm reading from the very beginning of chapter 65, which is only a couple of verses away from where our Old Testament lesson ended. The Lord said, responding to Israel, I was ready to answer my people's prayers, but they did not pray. I was ready for them to find me, but they did not even try. The nation, Israel, did not pray to me, even though I was always ready to answer with, Here I am. I will help you. When we come to Christmas morning this year, will we have prayed? Will we have gut-wrenchingly made sacrifices that we need to make in order to welcome Jesus more completely? Will the Christmas feeling be fueled by the fact that we have bought into the commercialism, or will it be fueled by the fact that we have radically said yes to Jesus? Which will it be? Make straight the pathways of the Lord that he may enter your heart and never leave. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you have given us this time to stay alert and to stay awake and to make ready all of the rooms within our heart that you may be at home, that you might find the place of honor within us. Help us in every way through each day of Advent to prepare more deeply that we might have the feeling of joy and the feeling of your glory within us come Christmas morning. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. you to stand as you're able. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, 
he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. And would you join me on page 387 as we pray our prayer the prayers of the people this morning. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for saints who have entered, for your saints, who have entered into joy, may we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray in silence for our own needs and those of others. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will, and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us continue worshiping as we receive our tithes and offerings, and as we come to the Holy Table to receive communion. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of heaven. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> Receive, O Lord, these gifts presented by your people for the work of your church. Amen. invite you to stand as we return our thanks to the Lord, singing, Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. 
Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal King. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Beloved, the gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We're going to do communion a little bit differently, at least this Sunday, perhaps through Advent. I'm going to ask this side to have a seat for a moment, and I'm going to ask this side to come forward, and I'll serve you in both times this morning. You want to maybe form a little half circle in front of the altar.
invite you to stand as you're able. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, scatter the darkness from before your path, and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.